Well, good morning, good morning, good morning, and good morning to Martin Street and all of God's people. My name is the Reverend Dr. Sean J. Singleton, and I'm just hallelujah glad to welcome you here to our Sunday morning worship experience. We're going to get started this morning by looking unto the Lord in prayer. Our Father and our God, in the name of Jesus, again, Lord, we thank you. Oh, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for last night's sleep and this morning's awakening. And we thank you, Lord, that you've allowed us to see the dawning of a brand new day. We thank you, Lord, that you've allowed us to see the dawning of a brand new month. And so, Father God, in the name of Jesus, again, we thank you, Lord, that you've allowed us to come here so that we might worship you in spirit as well as in truth. And so now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we place this time of worship into your hands that you're all wise and your perfect will may be done. In Jesus' name we do pray. Let all of God's people say amen, amen, and amen. To God be the glory, amen, for the great things that he has done. Amen. We welcome you here to this beautiful month of October on this very first Sunday. We're going to get this glory train started by inviting our praise team to come and usher us into the presence of the Lord. And I'll be back when they get through. Come on, praise team. Sing. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it.
Well, amen, church. Hey, to God be the glory. Amen. We want to thank our praise team for getting us started on this glory train on this morning. Amen. And ushering us into the presence of the Lord. Amen. We're so excited about uh, what God is doing here. And look, we're so hallelujah glad to welcome you here to Martin Street Baptist Church. No matter where you are and how you're joining with us, we want you to know that we're just hallelujah glad and peacock proud that you decided to join with us here Martin Street Baptist Church because look we know there are a whole lot of churches that you could have tuned into and watched their broadcast this morning but the fact that you decided to tune in with us uh, means that you are a true blessing to us and we pray that we are being a blessing to you also amen so to God be the glory amen uh, and so right now is the time when we pause for just a moment for what we call the Martin Street News and we start the Martin Street News as we always do by asking that you would please pray for the sick and the shut in because again we know that there's some among us that would like to be able to get out and about but the body would not allow them so those of you who know that there is power in prayer we ask that you would please pray for them so that in your time of need somebody will pray for you amen church well the time is almost near next sunday october the 10th we will be celebrating our annual women's day and this year's theme is women of faith rooted in love growing in grace and it's being lifted from Philippians 4 and 13 and as you can see on your screen they have a wonderful week of activities lined up uh, Wednesday night there was dinner and Bible study Thursday night game night Friday night praise and paint Saturday morning they're asking all the women of the church to join them for blessings in a bag and then on Sunday morning we'll have our worship service our guest speaker is Dr. Latanya Agard amen and they're asking that all the members of the church will support the women of the church by donating $100 amen so let us come together and support the women of Martin Street Baptist Church amen amen well, church, it's a brand new month, amen. As we come to the month of October, we're celebrating all of those October babies by saying happy, happy birthday to each and every one of you, amen. To God be the glory. And we have quite a few October birthdays being celebrated here this month, amen. We start the celebration for uh, Brother Lionel Curtis, Sister Val Jean Mitchell, Sister Crystal Henderson, Sister Dorothy Sanders, Sister Rhonda Curry, Sister Teresa Dickens, Brother Curtis Anderson, Deacon Donald Lyles, Sister Cheryl Curry, Sister Winona Swayze, Sister Adeline Isaac, Deacon David Brown Jr., Deacon Albert Scott, Sister Truvon Austin, Sister Catherine Brooks, Sister Maxine McCorkle, Brother Christian Brooks, Sister Mary Newton, Brother Mohammed So, Sister Yvonne Francis, Sister Greta Morris, Sister Willie Wood, Sister w Sylvia West, and Sister Terry Brown. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. For each and every one of you, we pray that this will be a glorious, glorious month, one to remember. And on your special day, we pray, we pray that you will have some special blessings poured out on you. So we want you to know from your church family, just happy, happy birthday to each and every one of you. Amen. And church, if you don't mind, I just want to pause for a moment and just say happy anniversary coming up on in two days uh, to my lo lovely wife, amen. October the 5th, 1997, we, we stood at the altar and we said I do, and it's been the best decision of my life, and I just pray that God will continue to bless us with many, many more. We're coming up on 24 years in two days. So, sweetie, God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Amen? Amen. Well, church is also uh, coming now to our COVID-19 update. Uh, there's some real good news now. And the good news is that 79% of per persons 12 years and older are now vaccinated here in Wake County. Amen. So Wake County is doing a good job. We're, we're not as high as we want to be, but we thank God for all of those that have went out and got the shot and gotten vaccinated. But look, we want to encourage others to continue to, to be smart and be safe. Continue. The more people get vaccinated, the less we have to worry about uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, killing people. So please, please, let's continue to do all we can do to eradicate COVID-19 from among us. Amen? Amen. Well, church, again, we always want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to each and every person that has donated here to Martin Street Baptist Church. Amen. It's only because of your kind and gracious donations that we are able to do the things that God has called us to do. And I want you to know that as the pastor of this church, I am just, just, just thankful for each and every person, for every sow seed that has been sown into this church. I want you to know that it has been sown into good ground and 
sooner or later, God is going to bring you a great harvest. Amen. And so again, we're just thankful. We praise God for each and every one of you. We want to encourage you to continue to give as the Lord has given unto you. And if you're one of those that have not given but are thinking about giving here to Martin Street Baptist Church, we want you to know that there are multiple ways that you can send in a contribution. Number one, you can mail in a contribution to Martin Street Baptist Church, which is located at 1001 East Martin Street, Raleigh, North Carolina, 27601. Or if you're in the Raleigh area, you can drop off your donations at the drop box located right outside our Family Life Center, which is always accessible and checked on a daily basis. If you do electronic giving, you can download the cash app application to any electronic device. And once you do so, if you put in dollar sign MSBC offering, dollar sign MSBC offering, 100% of those contributions come directly to Martin Street Baptist Church. Or lastly, you can go to our church website, which is located at www.martinstreetbaptist.org. Once you do so, you'll see this beautiful front page. If you go up into the upper right-hand corner and click on the online giving tab, it'll bring you to this page where you'll see that there are multiple ways that you can give unto the Lord as the Lord has given unto you, always remembering that God, he loveth a cheerful giver, and you are never more like God than when you give. And so again, we want to thank you. We want to praise God for each and every one of you, and we want to encourage everybody to continue to give as the Lord has given unto you. Amen. Amen. We also want to thank you for joining us for the Martin Street News. Again, uh, uh, all our members, please be on the lookout uh, for our Monday morning email blast with more uh, uh, information for the exciting things that will be taking place here at Martin Street Baptist Church. And we leave by reminding you that wherever you are in Raleigh, all roads lead to Martin Street. Amen. God bless you and enjoy the rest of the service. Good morning. The scripture reading will come this morning from the New King James Version, Romans 8, verse 18, and it reads thusly, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that we shall reveal in God. Please join me in a word of prayer. O Lord, our most high and sovereign God of heaven and earth, we come this morning to give praise and glory for the greatness of your calling. Dear God, according to your word, the true glory of living is manifest in your presence in our lives. The true glory of living is always in agreement with what God has purposed us to do as true believers and Christians. The glory of God is ever present and accessible. The heavens even declare the glory of the Lord and the whole earth is full of his glory. We know that the earth is the Lord and all of his fullness. Help us, O Lord, to open our eyes to receive your great wonders, especially in our time of need. We know Elijah prayed when overwhelmed by his enemies. His servant was afraid, and Elijah prayed, Open up his eyes, O Lord, that he may see your wonders. Then you, O Lord, opened his servant's eyes, and he saw the power and glory of the Lord in his time of need. God, we know that you will be with us, and we know that you are there for every troubled soul and every waiting heart. Saint Uranus states that the glory of God gives life, man fully alive. Moreover, man's life is the vision of God, and the actualization of life comes from experiencing and participating in God for he is the one that will give us joy and goodness. We are humbled and eternally grateful for your glory and your presence in our lives, O Lord. We thank you, dear God, for your many great and precious promises. For we know without Jesus, we can do nothing. With him, nothing is impossible. We thank you for the assurance that you promise you will supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory. I truly believe that the greatest manifest manifestation 
of your glory was in the person of your son, Jesus Christ. For the word says, we have seen the glory of the Lord, glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth, and that the true glory of man is to grow and mature in likeness to his son and to live in fellowship and harmony with God. In Jesus' name we pray to God be the glory. Amen.
Well, amen, church. To God be the glory. Amen. You know what time it is now. As I always say, it's it's preaching time. Amen. All other things have been done decent and in order and helped us to prepare our hearts that we might receive a word from the Lord. Amen. And our pericope before today will be found in the book of Philemon. Amen. Amen. Philemon. And our pericope will be verses 19 through 25. Amen. And there you will find these words written in the NIV version of the Holy Text. It says, I, Paul, am writing this with my own hand. And I will pay it back, not to mention that you owe me your very self. I do wish, brother, that I may have some benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. Confident of your obedience, I write to you, knowing that you will do even more than I ask. And one more thing, prepare a guest room for me, because I hope to be restored to you in answer to your prayers. Ephesus, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, sends you greetings, and so do Mark, Aristarchus, Demas, and Luke, my fellow workers, the grace of of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. God's word for God's people. It is blessed and made that a blessing to us all. The Heavenly Father, Lord God Almighty. Lord, we just thank you. Oh, thank you, Father God, for the tremendous opportunity that you have given us to once again come in your presence and hear directly from you. And so, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray now that you would speak to us, Lord, and speak to us in such a way, Lord, that we know that we have heard from you. Speak to us in such a way, Lord, that when we leave your presence here today, we know that we have been in the presence of greatness. And so, Father God, in the name of Jesus now, your manservant, Lord, I pray that you would hide me behind the cross that only you might be seen. I pray, Lord, that you would speak to my mind and you would speak through these lips of clay that I might give your word as you've given it unto me. And then, Father God, as always, I ask for preaching power, the kind of power that makes preaching easy. And, Lord, I ask all these things in your son, Jesus Christ, and our Lord and Savior, and his holy and his precious name. And let the church say amen, amen, and amen. Well, church, for the time that we have to share today, I want to talk about something that is very important and often overlooked in this Christian journey. And what I want to talk about is Christian companions. Come on, somebody. Christian companions. As a pastor of God's people, one of the things, church, I've always tried to do is I've tried to make it a point to be there for my members in their times of need. And I don't know about any other pastor, but for me, I've always thought that one of the most critical times to be there for someone is when they're about to go through surgery. And one of the reasons I've always thought that that was a particular time that a pastor needs to be there for his members is anybody who's been through surgery knows that it can be a very lonely time. You see, because regardless of what kind of surgery you have, regardless of what time they tell you to be there, regardless of how much preparation they told you to do for the surgery, There will come a time, church, when you will have to say goodbye to your family. There will come a time, church, when the doctor will tell you to say goodbye to your friends and to your pastor and all of your loved ones that come with you. The reason that they tell you to say goodbye to them is that no matter what kind of surgery you're going through, there will come a point in that surgery procedure, when you're gonna have to go through something all by yourself. And that's why, church, I gotta thank God for Jesus. Because there have been times in my life when I had to go where my family could not go. And there have been times when I had to go where even my wife, my children, they they could not go with me. But I thank God, church, that when I had to go where my family and my friends could not go, that I still was not all by myself. 
Oh, I thank God, church, that I may have looked like that I was by myself, but I've, I've come to let you know that I still had a companion on my side. Oh, I know when you looked at me, it looked like I was all by myself, but I've come to let you know that I always had my Jesus. And all I'm trying to tell somebody, that's why we sing that song that says, there is no friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one, because there is not an hour that he is not near us. No, not one. And the good news, church, is not only will Jesus be with you, but Jesus, somebody knows, will be your lawyer when you're in trouble, your doctor when you're sick, your navigator when you're lost. He'll even be a shoulder when you need one to cry on. He'll be your answer to every question that you might have, but most importantly, church, Jesus will always be a reminder that no matter what it is you're going through, you do not have to go through it all by yourself. Come on, somebody. Jesus will remind you that, that you've always got some help. You've always got somebody that you can lean on. You've always got a hand that you can hold on to. Because even when you can't see him, church, somebody knows that he's always there. And in your times of trouble, somebody knows that Jesus, he'll hide you, he'll protect you, and he'll take care of you. And Jesus in such a way that he'll have you singing that there is no friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. And church, I just believe that if you know the Bible, you know that there, if there was anybody who knew that there is no friend like Jesus, it had to be Paul. If there was ever anybody who had been through some stuff where he needed to lean on the Lord, I believe that it was Paul. If there was ever anybody who was in a situation where he needed a hand to hold on to, church, I believe that it was Paul. But, but one of the things that Paul teaches us in his writing is that it's good to know that you've got the Lord on your side. But it's also good to know that you've got some Christian companions that don't mind going through what it is that you're going through. So here in our text, church, Paul is closing out, and Paul is, is asking that, he, that, that they would remember his Christian companions. Paul sends greetings from Ephesus, but he says, will you remember my Christian companions? And, and church, I just believe that that's something that all of us are going to need because life is not easy, and somewhere along the way, all of us are going to need some help. And so I believe, church, what Paul does here, couched in the context of these scriptures, is Paul teaches all of us of the kind of Christian companions we need to make sure that we have on our side. And the first Christian companion that Paul tells us that we all need, Paul says, is we all need the prodigal. Come on. We all need that, that, that prodigal companion in our lives. I know you may be wondering where it is, but, but here Paul classifies John Mark as that prodigal companion. But in order to understand why Mark is considered as the prodigal companion, the first thing you got to understand is that one of the definitions for a prodigal is somebody that left home, behaves recklessly, and then later repents in their return. And for those of you that know the biblical narrative, you know that this could be said about John Mark. You see, because the book of Acts tells us that Paul took John Mark with him on his missionary journey. But, but somehow, some way, along the way, Paul and John, I mean Mark and Paul, they had a falling out. And, and Mark had to return home. But when he returned home, church, he returned home in disgrace. Why? Because he had had a falling out with the gospel globetrotter himself. And at this time in his ministry, Paul considered John Mark to be useless. But thanks be to God, church, that's not the way that the story ends. Because we know that Barnabas, he took John Mark with him on another missionary journey. And while John Mark was out there with Barnabas, God restored him. God redeemed him. But not only did God redeem him and restore him, but God used Mark to write his own gospel. 
And the reason we all need a Christian companion like John Mark is because somewhere along the way, all of us are going to make some mistakes. Somewhere along the way, all of us are going to fall down. All of us are going to miss the mark. And when you do, church, the one thing you're going to need is a companion or a friend that will encourage you and help you to get back on your feet. You see, one of the greatest mistakes that some of us make is we want to surround ourselves with only super saints that have always been good. Too many of us want to surround ourselves with these super saints that ain't never done anything wrong. We want to surround ourselves with these super saints that think that they're perfect. And the problem with that is, church, when they think that they're perfect, they expect you to be perfect too. And when you got those kind of friends that expect you to be perfect, then when you fall, I'm here to tell you, they'll have no compassion on you. Come on, somebody. But when you have that prodigal companion, when you have a friend like John Mark, they'll understand what Paul said when Paul said, Brethren, if a man be overtaken by a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one, and the spirit of meekness, lest you fall yourself. Come on. When you have a prodigal companion, they remember church when they were down. They remember the mistakes that they have made. And because they remember their own path, they're quick to tell you, look, I've been where you are. I've messed up before and I've fallen down too. And the thanks be to God that when I was down, that God didn't leave me down. But instead, God reached way, way down and he picked me up. And if God can pick somebody like me up, then surely God will pick you up too. That's what you need a prodigal companion for, to be there and to remind you that when you fall down, you can always get back up. Come on, somebody. The second kind of friend you're going to need, Paul says, is you're going to need a partner. That's, that's, that's the kind of Christian companion you need. You need a real partner in this Christian journey. Come on, somebody. And we don't know much about Aristocharis. But what we do know about him, church, is from the biblical narrative, he was a loyal and a faithful partner with Paul. And we know this, church, because in the book of Acts, we are told that he was shipwrecked with Paul and Malta. But even after that, church, he continued to partner with Paul in ministry. Paul also speaks about Aristocharis in the book of Colossians, and there Paul referred to him as his fellow prisoner. But even after that church, he continued to partner with Paul in ministry. And if there's anything that we need, church, in life, we need a friend and a companion that will stick with you and partner with you no matter how bad life gets. Come on, somebody. You see, we've all had those fair weather friends. We've all had those friends that'll stick with you as long as things are going well. We've all had those good time friends that'll stick with you as long as the good times just keep on rolling. And we've all had those sometimey friends that will stick with you and partner with you sometime. But I don't know about anybody else, church, but I don't need any fair weather friends because I do know that sooner or later the storm clouds will begin to come in. And I don't need any good time friends because I know that sooner or later the good times are going to stop rolling. And I don't need any sometimey friends, church, but I need the kind of friend that will walk with me and partner with me no matter what it is that I'm going through. And the reason, church, we all need this kind of companion is because if you live long enough, church, somebody, if it ain't happened yet, you just keep on living. But if you live long enough, church, there will come a time when you're going to need somebody to pray with you and pray for you. And the time will come when you're going to need somebody that will touch and agree and hold on to you with what it is that you're going through. You see, it's good to know that Jesus will never leave you nor forsake you, church. It's good to know that Jesus will always be by your side. But every now and then, church, I need somebody's hand to hold on to. I need somebody to speak a word of encouragement into my life. Every now and then, I need somebody to help me with what it is that I'm going through. And that's because every now and then, I need a friend. I need a companion. I need a partner that will stick closer to me than a brother, Come on, somebody. 
every now and then you need somebody that when you pick up the phone, they just call in to check on you. They know you're going through. They don't need to know all the details of why your divorce fell apart. All they need, need you to know is, I'm here for you. They don't need to know everything that was on the bad doctor's report. All they need you to know is, I'm here for you. They don't need to know why your child is locked up. All they need to know, need you to know is, I'm here for you. No matter what it is that you're going through, you don't have to go through it all by yourself because I will partner with you through the difficult moments in life. I don't need you to show up in the good times. I need somebody that's going to be with me through the bad times, church. Come on, somebody. The next kind of friend that Paul says that you need is everybody needs that pauper companion. <laughs> yeah, we all need the pauper in our life. Come on, somebody. Those of us that know the story of Demas, we know that Demas, church, he's one of those that started off well in ministry and we know this because Demas was a co-worker of Paul Demas was out there in the in the in, in the vineyards church starting churches with Paul but somewhere along the way church we also know that Demas deserted Paul we know that somewhere along the way that Demas church he turned his back on Paul and the overarching theological belief is that Demas deserted Paul Church because he fell in love with this world. Come on, somebody. And I know somebody may be asking yourself, well, Pastor, <laughs> if Demas deserted Paul or Demas turned his back on Paul, then tell me, Pastor, why would I need a companion like Demas? And that's a good question, and I'm glad you asked, but the biblical text teaches us that the answer to the question is why we all need a companion like Demas, a pauper, is because you need a pauper to remind you, church, of what could have been. That's right. <laughs> you, you always need somebody to be there to remind you of the possibilities of what could have been in your life. You see, Demas had gotten off to a great start in life. Demas Church, he had so much potential, but as the old saying goes, potential is only as good as what you decide to do with it. Because we all know somebody that had a lot of potential in life. We all know some people that got off to a good start in life, but somehow, some way, they strayed away from the path of righteousness. They got caught up with the wrong crowd, or they fell in love with this world. And now, church, instead of being mentioning for all the great things that they've done in life. They are mentioned by the fact that they got started in the church, but then you got to be reminded that they may have started in the church, but they became a cautionary tale of what not to do and who you don't want to become. We always see these folks that after they done messed up, after they done gone out there in the world and done all of this, then they want to tell their story about, I got my start in the church. But the problem is a whole lot of folks start in the church, don't stay in the church. And when they leave the church, they become like demons and they become a pauper because they become a cautionary tale of what could have been in their life. And the reason demons became a pauper instead of a partner is because he chose to fall in love with this world. Come on, church. He chose to fall in love with the wrong things. And that's why, church, we all need a companion that will serve as a reminder of what we don't want to happen to us. That's right. We all need that companion that when we look at them, we, we can think about who they could have been, what they could have done. And we say to ourselves, I don't want that to happen to me. But I've come to let you know, church, that if you love this world more than you love God, if you love the things of this world more than you love the things of God, then it's only a matter of time before you become a pauper and you become like demons because it's only a matter of time before you turn your back on God. And it's only a matter of time before you choose the comforts, the convenience, the power, and the pleasures of this world. You see, that's why, church, we are instructed to be in the world but not of the world. 
Because the moment you become of the world, you begin to love the world. And whether you know it or not, whether you want to acknowledge it or not, this is a fallen and a dying world. And if you fall in love with this world, then you are going to die right along with it. And you too will be like Demas. Folks will be sitting around at the, at the class reunion and talking about whatever happened to so-and-so. He was a straight-A student. He was the captain of the football team. Whatever happened to him? And the story would be, man, he fell off bad. You show up at the class reunion or the family reunion and folks, and you show up smiling like, hey, y'all. And everybody looking at, who is that? And then somebody got to whisper and say, man, you know who that is? That's so-and-so, yeah. And they, what they want to know is not how you're doing, but what they want to know is what happened to her? She had it going on when we were in school. She had everything going her way. She was smart. She was good looking. She, she, she had money. What, what happened? She didn't continue down the path that she got started on. But the last kind of companion that Luke tells us we need is we need the physician. Come on now. I ain't talking about no medical doctor. We, we, we need that, that, that companion is like a physician. Those of us that know the biblical narrative, we know that Luke was an actual physician. But more important than being a physician, we know that Luke was a sold-out believer for Jesus Christ. And one of the things that is very evident from Luke's gospel is Luke was very keen on the little things. In Luke church, he was very keen on the details of the gospel. And that may be why when you read Luke's gospel, you find out that his gospel is the longest of all the gospels. You see, because Luke was a physician, and one of the major points of his gospel was to write about the needs of ordinary people. Come on, somebody. And that's why all of us need a friend and need a companion like Luke. Because all of us need that physician-like companion in our life because we all need to be reminded that God didn't save us so that we can be a blessing just to us. But instead, God saved us, church, so that we might be a blessing to the others that he's put around us. And when you read Luke's gospel, church, one of the things that Luke does is he portrays Jesus as a real person with, with real emotions and with real feelings. And he reminds us that Jesus just wasn't interested in people that went to church, but Jesus was interested in everybody. Come on, somebody. And again, that's why we all need a friend and a companion like Luke. That's why we all need that physician-like companion in our life so that when we encounter someone that is less fortunate than us, when we encounter someone that is down and out in life, when we encounter someone that is in need, church, a companion like you will help you answer the question of what would Jesus do? Come on, somebody. <laughs> Last time, when you, when you pull up to the light and you see that person out there begging and asking for change, you got to ask yourself, what would Jesus do? Because my Bible tells me that when these men were on their way to the church called Beautiful, that they encountered a man along the wayside that was begging. And my Bible said that when they saw that man, they said unto him, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee in the name of Jesus. Rise up and walk. And I just believe, church, that if Jesus was living here amongst us right now, if Jesus would see the needs that are around us, if Jesus would see the needs of our people, that if somebody would ask, what would Jesus do? The first thing that Jesus would do is he would look beyond their faults, and Jesus would simply see their needs. Too often before we help people, we want to know how they got in that situation. Too often before we give them what they need, we want to find out how do they let themselves get down and do so bad. But in sometimes you don't need to know the story of how they got there. Instead, what you need to do is reach out and give them the help that they understand in need of. 
And how do I know what Jesus would do, church? When, I, when you ask the question, well, well, what would Jesus do for those that are in need? Well, I'll tell you what Jesus would do for those that are in need. My Bible says that Jesus went up to an old rugged cross for some people that were in need. My Bible says that Jesus, church, that he hung, bled, and died for some people that were in need. My Bible says that Jesus went down into a borrowed tomb for some people that were in need. My Bible says that Jesus stayed there Friday and all day Saturday, and he did it for some people in need. But thanks be to God that my Bible says that early that Sunday morning, Jesus got up and he got up for some people that were in need. And I don't know how you identify yourself, but I identify myself as one of those people that were in need. I was in need of a savior. <laughs> and Jesus said he would be all that I need and oh, so much more. I thank God for Jesus, church. But I also thank God for the Christian companions that he's put in my, in my life. The Christian companions that have been there to, to help me along this Christian journey. I thank God, church, for the prodigal companions that I've had, church that had been there when I was down, that, that, that would say to me, look, I've been down before. But the good news is that a saint ain't nothing but a sinner who fell down and then got back up. I thank God for the partners in ministry that God has given me. Oh, for the most of all, the, the partner of my wife, church, the, the, I call her my Ananias. She, she was there to help remove the scales from my eyes, to help me see what I could not see, help me to become what I could not become. And after all these years, she's still partnering with me. But there are many other partners that God has given me along this Christian journey. But I also thank God for the paupers <laughs> that I've encountered along the way. I thank God for every cautionary tale that I've been able to see. I thank God for the way that they remind me of what could happen if you stray away from that path of righteousness. But I also thank God for the physicians that he's put around me. The ones that, 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 are, that are keen on the details, the small things in life. The ones that are always there to remind me that, listen, yes, you are blessed. But God has blessed you so that you might be a blessing to those around you. Never forget about the other people that God has put in your life and how you can be a blessing to them. Because every time you're a blessing to God's people, you are a blessing to them. Jesus said, you know, every time you feed the hungry, it's like you're feeding him. Every time you give water to the thirsty, it's like you're giving water to him. Every time you, feed, you, you visit the sick, it's like you're visiting him. So thank God for Jesus. But let us also thank God for those Christian companions that have helped us along the way. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Thank you. And we hope to see you on next week. Amen. God bless you. Well, amen, church. It is the first Sunday in here at Martin Street Baptist Church. The first Sunday is the time that we set aside to recognize the holy ordinance of Holy Communion. Amen. It's such a wonderful time that we can come together and to dine at the Lord's table. But the Lord does issue a warning in his word, and he said, Whosoever shall eat of this bread and drink of this cup unworthily, eat it and drink of damnation to themselves. And what the Lord is saying is before you eat of this bread, before you drink of this cup, now would be the time to, to ask the Lord to come into your heart and forgive you of all of your sins. Ask the Lord to help you to give forgiveness to anyone that may have committed trespass against you so that you might eat and drink worthily of the representation of his body and his blood. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us now pray. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. O oh Lord God, we just thank you now 
for the tremendous opportunity that you have given sinners like us to dine at your table. We thank you, Father God, for the bread that represents your body. We thank you for the cup that represents your blood. And we pray now, Father God, that your Holy Spirit, your holy anointing, and your holy presence will fall down on these elements so that we might be anointed by them, Father God. We pray, Lord, that as we put them on the inside, Father God, that we will be anointed from the inside to the outside so that we might be transformed into the image of your Son. We pray, Lord, that you would forgive us of all of our sins, that you would cleanse us of all all unrighteousness, Father God. We pray right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that you would do what only you can do. And Lord, we'll be ever so careful to give you honor, to give you praise, and to give you glory, because Lord, you deserve that and owe so much more. In Jesus' name we do pray. Let all of God's people say amen, amen, and amen. Amen. We ask now that you would read along with us as we read from the Holy Scriptures. For I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus that same night in which he was betrayed took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament and my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat of this bread and drink of this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home that ye come together not under condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. Amen. Amen. Well, my brothers and sisters, we know that on that faithful night when the Lord had gathered his disciples right there amongst them, he knew that his betrayer was right there. But even knowing that, he said to them that this bread represents my body, which shall be broken for you. And we know that Jesus' body was broken, beaten, and battered for you and I so that we would not have to go through what he went through. And he says, as often as we eat of this bread, we do show his death until he comes again. So the church, let us now take break and eat in remembrance of what he did for us. And after they had eaten the bread, he then took the cup and he said to them that this cup represents the New Testament in my blood. And he said to them, as he says to us, that there is no forgiveness of sin without the shedding of blood. Again, we know that he went to Calvary's cross and he shed his precious and his priceless blood so that you and I might have access to the tree of life. And he said to them, as he said to us, do ye this as often as ye can in remembrance of me. So let us take and drink in remembrance of him. Amen. Again, we pray the Lord's blessings over each and every one of you. We pray that heaven will continue to smile upon you, and we pray that God's favor will be upon you and your family. In Jesus' name we do pray, amen, amen. Well, hallelujah, hallelujah, bless his name, amen to God. Be the glory, amen, as we always say, did not our hearts burn, amen, as we worship the Lord in spirit as well as in truth, amen. Again, we thank God for this worship experience on this first Sunday here in the month of October. We thank God for the opportunity to dine at his table, amen, and participate in the Holy Communion. We thank God for everything that was said and done in this worship experience, but we also, we thank God for you, amen. We thank God that you decided to tune in with us here at Martin Street Baptist Church. But look, we never conclude our broadcast by assuming that everybody that heard us is saved. So look, if you heard this broadcast and through this worship experience, you've decided that you want to give your life to Christ. Look, I want you to know that that's a wonderful decision. And right now, wherever you are, 
you too can be saved. All you got to do is pray and ask the Lord to come into your heart. Ask the Lord to forgive you of all of your sins, and I want you to know that he will do just that. Amen? Or maybe you're somebody who's been saved, but you kind of strayed away from that path of righteousness, and what you want to do while you still have time is you want to come back home, and you want to get back into a right and loving relationship with Jesus Christ. Well, I want you to know that God is standing and waiting for you, and he says, whosoever will, just let them come. Amen. Right now, I want you to know that you can come back to Jesus, just however you are. But lastly, maybe you're in need of a church home. Maybe you're somebody that you just want to connect with the local body of believers. You just want to be under the covering of the blood. You want to be uh, connected with uh, uh, people who love you and love the Lord. Well, I want you to know that we'll be glad to have you here at Martin Street Baptist Church to be a part of what God is doing in our lives. Amen. But most of all, whatever your cry, whatever your call, I want you to know that God hears you, God loves you, and God has promised to answer all of your prayers. Amen. And so we thank God for you. We praise God for this worship experience. Amen. And we pray that you would join us on next week as we celebrate our annual Women's Day. It is going to be a great day in the Lord. Amen. I, I'm looking forward to it, and I hope you are too. So listen, as we get ready to leave, I want to remind you, as I always do, that winner. And wherever you are in Raleigh, I want you to know that all roads lead directly to Martin Street. Amen. God bless you, and I hope to see you soon.